different people come from different backgrounds and hence have a very different perspective to what we mean by data centric AI and a model centric AI. Hello and welcome everyone uh, to the next episode of the Analytics India Magazine podcast Simulated Reality uh, featuring the AIM Leaders Council members. Uh, today we have with us the Director of Research Engineering from Thomson Reuters, Shirsha Re Chaudhary. Uh, welcome Shirsha, how are you today? Hi Kashyap, I'm doing good. Okay, great. Uh, so we are uh, going to talk about a topic uh, that has been debated uh, over the last year uh, for some time and there are different answers but Shirsha has a completely different take on it uh, and that is basically data centric versus model centric. Uh, but she wants to talk about pipeline centric but before we go there, uh, why don't we kind of for the audience right break down what is data centric models, what is uh, you know, uh, uh, more, sorry, data centric AI and model centric yeah. AI. So let's let's break that down first, sure. and then talk about what it is, and then maybe we can sure, move forward. Sure. So, um, Kashyap, even as I you know get into this, right, I want to you know sort of lay this out that this is my definition. Um, nobody has given these definitions out there, and this is, you know, and and as I read through different research papers, and I'm I've met different people, even in our uh, leaders council in Analytics India magazine, I feel different people come from different backgrounds, and hence have a very different perspective to what we mean by data centric AI and a model centric AI, right? Um, it's it's also got to do with the maturity of um, the company that they belong to, how that setup is, or the client that they're working for the projects they are part of, that ecosystem, the tech ecosystem. So a lot of things influence how you perceive this definition, right? Uh, so with that being said, uh, I could definitely tell you my definitions and um, here's where I see it, right? The, the projects where they're looking at doing, you know, like a proof of concept, you're doing a prototype, you're trying to find out if this thing is gonna work. Are you gonna be able to predict this? Are you going to be able to classify this, right? And in, in those sort of problem statements, you're trying to see how good our algorithms going to be able to help me in this decision making. So that becomes then a very model centric approach where you're looking at identifying that algorithm, which will lead you to the answers, right? So that's my whole take on model centric. Now, um, if I flip the page and let's say you've got your version one of this model, you're able to classify um, those documents, you're able to predict, um, you know, the next uh, overcast day. So uh, you, you then now will need to ensure that the solution can continue to give you good results, right? Um, each With each run, you're able to get uh, predictable good results. So then um, you'll need to ensure that the data that you feed into this model is of a particular good standard. Or you will then need to um, sort of engineer the data to be able to make it uh, work for the model, right? And then uh, if, if the system needs to continue to work well, which means I need to continue to ensure that my data is continuing to be of a you know, suitable standard and my model will then be able to work with it, which means this then becomes a very data centric approach. I'm not touching so much my model anymore, but I'm ensuring my data um, continues to uh, be that which is useful for the model. Okay, so then this is this is data centric AI. I could plunge right away into pipeline centric AI, but then that's that next yeah, level. Yeah, I think we should, we will 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 visit uh, pipeline centric AI, and uh, I would definitely like to talk about it because I've never I'd, I'd never heard it until you said you wanted to talk about the uh, so, uh, talk talk on it, right? Um, but uh, you talked about you know uh, model centric being more research driven or more you know uh, where experimenting experimental experimentation and data centric then more is there instances where is it definitive that a data centric approach is better than model centric or is it just case by case basis not not it's not so um, it's not like you know uh, this is better than this approach right it's i would say the state in which the project is or the organization is, right? Um, if, if uh, like I mentioned, right, if your maturity uh, of that ecosystem of that organization of the project is such that you've proven that yes, models are going to help me predict or models are going to help me classify, I will be extracting these um, keywords out of these documents which come to me. So you know the capabilities of AI, 
what you now want to do is ensure that um, the right kind of data hit it, which means you're operationalizing it for business impact, right? So then you take on a more data centric approach. Whereas when you're even in that mode where you have to prove that a model can help you here, well then you will need to look at a model centric approach. Um, and, and, and the same organization could even have both instances, right? I was talking to this person who works in the um, healthcare space the other day and um, while there's one team which is you know predicting the risk score uh, with with set of you know um, x-ray images for let's say you know cancer and a couple of other diseases there is another very fine-grained algorithm that they're looking at to see if they will be able to measure the width of the bone right and that will again feed into probably some other algorithm but to be able to use computer images and predict or measure the width of a bone is highly experimental in nature right do i even have algorithms out there which will mathematically help me out so that's a very model centric approach and we cannot do much else the data is what it is right um and and you know when when the outcomes of these multiple such algorithms are feeding into whether is this an image uh, which is you know likely likely indicator of cancer well then that's more like you know you want to operationalize it you want to feed it into a sort of a healthcare aid mechanism or you're going to review maybe claims whatever right so in that case then it becomes a more you know data centric thing so that you don't do any anything wrong you're in control of the solution space so then okay but then these situations that you talk about depend on a lot of ifs and buts right so yeah. the idea that uh, we have the luxury to take a model centric approach and data centric approach is also not true there are so many areas where the digitization is very low yeah. data collection is low yeah. then how do you take a data centric approach in solving a business solution where the data is low can small amounts of data but good quality data can change that or like then you take a model centric approach and how is that debate how In is fact, that dynamic Kashyap, i would argue to say that where you have you know less quantity of data and you're looking at um you know you're looking at uh, going live with your first version of the model which worked well with that you know small set of data it's all the more important that we look at a data centric view because you know you've trained your model with that very you know right set of data now uh, for the accuracies to continue to play to what they were trained with right you'll need to ensure that the data that comes in as it is used to um, uh, execute on the model needs to be of similar quality right so um, failing which have you heard of you know this whole um, space called as active learning no where you know you look at um, so you know you you said small amount of data right so you're looking at a small amount of data and you've trained your model now the model goes live and you start to detect that the real life uh, data is probably varying gradually from what it was trained on so what you want to be able to do is you know maybe do like a very you know selective sampling of that new data which is hitting the model and probably send it back to domain experts for sort of labeling is that reinforcement yes Re in, reinforcement in way, but in real time in a way in a way okay. but then it's you know you're also sort of sampling with the data that it hits the model so that you're able to keep it aside and retrain the model as it is live right so okay. um it's a very new concept and i know very few companies today have it in place but okay. um I, i think as you operationalize it and you want to ensure that the investment you made in the model continues to remain strong you need to probably look at these mechanisms to keep it up and ready okay and so you talked about the data coming in and then data so essentially there is a there's a pipeline right yep. there's and i think if i'm not wrong the entire pipeline centric is about uh data at different stages yeah. of the pipeline yeah. so is data centric approach or pipeline centric approach a subset of data centric or how how what is it can I, you I can say, you yeah. i would say kashyap pipeline centric is sort of like your next level of maturity right and you know like how we started off with model being uh you know very research oriented very experimental which means it its attention was limited to that group of researchers probably to the group of data scientists who were working on it when we extended the scope and the maturity to data centric it also involved all the data teams right all the tech teams who were involved in your data when we are saying pipeline centric we are increasing the scope further to a larger community 
and perhaps touching every aspect of the enterprise. Right? Uh, what we're saying is right from you know your different touch points to the customers, right from how you are um, tagging the customer. You probably want to keep track of what this is going to mean in my end solution. Mm. So it's right? not just the data. It's not just process. the data pipeline, but your entire process, right? Mm. And uh, for a successful, um, continuously successful model. Uh, to be doing well, I think it's important that everybody in the organization in that ecosystem understands how whatever they do influences the outcomes of the model, right? And that's what makes a truly great, uh, truly continuously successful model, I would say. Yeah, I would like to break down a little bit more, right? I think I've gotten a fair bit of like, like an overview of what pipeline centric is. When, let's say when, when we started working on uh, uh, model centric we we focused on algorithms and yeah. when we we thought that we, we need to focus on data we started focusing on data so the process has changed yeah. right so uh, probably the talent remained the same but the yeah. process has changed and probably the use of platforms changed like yeah. you kind of move to a different platform or use platforms that enable automated pipelines that can improve the uh, yeah. performance of the model right what what changes do companies need to adopt when they move to a pipeline centric model and how do they what is the first step to do that how do you the start the very it? first step kashyap what i have seen is an awareness right an ai education which touches everybody in the organization so we spoke about the healthcare um, use cases right so um, everyone in the organization in that company must be aware um, that the work they do eventually is going to lead to the mo a model somewhere in the ecosystem using it for inferring something right so um, be it diagnosticians who are working with probably labeling the data be it um, you know maybe claims and finance folks who are actually probably reviewing claims and actually looking at images and you know sort of what classifications a model did versus the what the diagnostic diagnosticians did right so you're so everybody in that ecosystem must be aware that they need to feed back so that this um, process continues to throw value Right? Okay. So step one is your awareness and your education uh, okay. to everyone in the organization. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. And then after that, like. Yeah. And, and, and after that, I think is a transparency in processes, right? Um, you know, while you do know the power of AI, I, I may probably not know what I do today, how, in how many hops and what is it leading to, right? And a little bit of the transparency helps you empower everybody to know that, okay, this what you do is going to enable this. Or it's going to enable them to even think, okay, why don't we also add this? Then perhaps my mo model could benefit more, right? So that transparency, I think, is um, goes hand in hand, of course, with the education, but education is a little more formal, a little more foundational. And then the transparency is in how is it in effect today, right? Okay. So let's take AI out of just that group of people who work yeah. on it and keep it live and um, you know, derive business sense out of it, but maybe make it uh, paint everybody with that paint. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my head around it, right? Uh, this, so both the steps that you maintained about knowledge and this thing is basically building a foundation yeah. within the company. I'm an AI engineer, let's say, I'm yeah. building a model. Yeah. Right? Uh, as an individual, right, what do I have to do differently to ensure that I'm building a pipeline or is it or let's not take it at an individual level, let's take it at a team level, right? A team of AI engineers is building an AI to, let's say, detect some kind of, uh, yep. I don't know, some yep. kind of disease yep. or something yep. like that. Then what is it that they need to do when writing the code, writing this thing, or is it, or, or the AI engineer at the, the manager at the top needs to build some frameworks? What is that kind of fundamental uh, uh, not fundamental, but tactical change in it yeah. is. So just like how I think we said that, you know, uh, let, let everybody in the organization be aware of the power of AI. Um, let's also uh, do the reverse, right? So you, you mentioned this AI engineer who's probably trying to um, build the finalized model, which is going to get deployed and is going to help us measure the bone width, right? That's what we were taking that as a use case. So um, why don't we allow him to also educate himself on what it takes, how this bone width influences other aspects, right? Or how might it look different? So maybe connect him with diagnosticians, nurses, doctors, domain specialists to be able to connect better with the algorithm, the data, 
right? Um, that enables him to see more than what just the algorithm is throwing back at him. It's very important and probably sometimes, I mean, we did, you know, we've in our leaders council also, Kashyap, we've often debated between, you know, domain training is important or not, or is it the tech training is important or not. I would say the domain training per project use case, that use case wise, it is important. So like you mentioned, let's have that framework in place which enables him to have those touch points with the domain specialists. There's also this other um, school of thought, you know, let the domain specialist choose the best performing model. And of course it can't be maybe, you know, individually done, perhaps in partnership, right? So don't let him sit in that silo, let him build those bridges and connect actually okay. with those domain Okay, specialists. so I think the, the broader aspect of it is more of a collaborative yes, approach absolutely. where uh, different processes or stages in a pipeline yeah. uh, take a holistic decision or there's a holistic decision making yeah. at each stage. Yeah, yeah. May it be data, may it be algorithms, may it be consumers, uh, consumers may it be the decision making of it. May it be stakeholders. May it be stakeholders, yeah. okay. And uh, Going forward, right, uh, how do you see this uh, changing or being adapted in India? So, I don't think many of them are even aware of it. Like this is the, the for me, I read about AI every day. I work in, at, you know, being at Analytics India Magazine. This is the first time I heard. Uh, does this, maybe hopefully our podcast helps the, uh, people to catch on. Uh, but how do you see this getting adopted within the, uh, not just India, but overall AI ecosystem? I think there are um, two um, two sets of you know uh, practitioners today in India, right? You have the set of practitioners who've been doing um, analytics models, right? Maybe to better uh, to to de develop that report, which will give you better business sense, to help you make better business decisions. That's one set. Then you have the other set of practitioners who are probably building models which are going to get embedded into products. Right? or um, is going to maybe continuously work behind the scene in an app or something like that. Right? So these are the two sets of people. Now, um, it depends on how continuously you're going to be connected to that ecosystem. We felt the need to have the pipeline-centric AI, Kasha, before we started to dig through it. Right? We felt, so just doing this once, just doing the uh, deployment of the first set of model, was yes, really, uh, you know, uh, earth shattering work that we did. But then close to the close to that, we were fed back with, hey, this is not working well. And these are the changes which are coming up. And so to keep pace with that, we definitely needed, um, you know, like you mentioned, better collaboration with the people who were consuming it, right? Mm -hmm. To be aware of what are the changes and when do they start to see those changes? Can we incorporate did them? Did you read about it somewhere before, or this the pipeline? pipeline yeah, or yeah? did you just like? So I'm, I'm telling you, right? It, the need hit us first. Is this a okay. Thomson Reuters no. copyright, or is no, it? No, no, no. no this is something not that you come. Okay. Not at all. So the need hit us, okay. and then we started to. Uh, Google and even if you do Google, you'll not find enough about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That's that's hard. So when so. you like really dig through, you know, the MLOps platform providers and their terminologies, that's when we uh, found pipeline-centric AI. Okay. Right, and we felt it really fit the maturity of the ecosystem that we were in, or rather the aspirational target. Right, like we want to be here. So we are today maybe data centric, we are, you know, arching towards pipeline centric in some ecosystems, but not all. And that's our target state, I would say. Okay. Uh, so with the hope of the need, as well as our podcast enabling I pipeline centric hope, I hope AI. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Shirsha, uh, for you, coming Kashyap. to the offices to shoot the podcast. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.